Right, hello, welcome back to the channel. Um, tonight we're going to be doing some, uh, well, it's tonight here, it's late. Bit of night time um, spannering. Um, it's got about four and a half thousand miles on this bike, hasn't it? And I've just got this feeling that it's losing compression. So um, I'm going to do a compression test, show you how to do it. Uh, you can buy these compression testers off um, Amazon. I'll stick a link in below to this one. This one's not that bad. I bought one of these before. It's about right about twenty five pound. Um, well, I'll start from the beginning. You've got different adapters here. You've got a ten mil, twelve mil, fourteen, sixteen, or it might be eighteen. That one might be. Um, the little Aprilia that takes a 10 mil spark plug so stick your compression sensor together this bit comes off the top a bit hard to do one hand um, so to do I'm not going to show you how to take the tank off but you know you undo this bolt here this bolt there the one on the other side lift it up take the seat off but what you want to do is you want to get it up to temperature. You want to get your bike up to temp before you do it. If you're not going to get your bike up to temp or if you've got a non-runner, um, expect to get about 15 to 10 PSI less on a cold engine than what you do on a warm engine. So I want to cut the video here. I want to get the bike up to temperature, get the tank up, um, and show you what to do from there. So right, back in a bit. Right, the next thing you need to do, I'm sorry about the lighting in the garage. Lighting's not that good. So you want to take your spark plug out. Make sure you've got no dirt in there so nothing falls in the engine. Then what you want to do, you want to disconnect your um, signal to your, on this bike. If it's a fuel injection bike, you want to disconnect your fuel injection so it's not putting fuel into the um, cylinder when you're doing a compression test. If you've got a bike that's not fuel inje injection, which is carburetor, just turn your petcock to off. Make sure you run the engine till it runs out of fuel. Um, so yeah, that's the next thing you need to do. So I want to disconnect this, do it off camera. And then we're going to screw the uh, 10 mil adapter off the um, compression tester into the um, spark plug hole. So I'll get to that stage and then I'll show you what to do next. Right, I've stuck this lamp on to try and give us some light on the um, situation. So I've disconnected the uh, fuel injection uh, signal. I've screwed in the um, compression tester. I didn't get the engine completely hot, but I warmed it up. Um, hold on a second, where's the key? I've got a video coming up in the next couple of days um, about tyres. So, yeah, what you want to do. So, turn it back on. So, on this, make sure you release any pressure. There's no pressure in it anyway. So, then what you want to do is you want to turn it over a few times. I can't emphasise, though, about making sure that fuel isn't going into your cylinder. Because if you're getting fuel going into your cylinder, it's gonna give you a false reading. So I'm gonna turn it over, and um, if you watch the pressure gauge. Okay. Well, without a doubt, I am definitely not losing compression getting 200 psi so that's got rid of my um, fears of me thinking I'm losing compression I definitely not what you want to do you want to be getting about over 125 over 125 is a healthy engine anything under 100 you got you got definitely something wrong um, Uh, I might as well finish this video, but I'll just give you a quick couple of tips. Um, if you are getting a low PSI, one way to test it is what you want to do is you put a bit of oil in the um, in the cylinder. 
Somebody's having fun. So yeah, you put a bit of oil in the cylinder um, and then kick it over. So again, start it, again, start it up. If you put some oil in the cylinder and the PSI goes up slightly, then it's your piston rings that have gone. If you put some oil in the cylinder and it doesn't go up, then it's going to be like your valve stems and yeah, it could be, I mean, it's quite hard to explain without going into too much detail, but um, you can do a pressure test with them. Um, if you've got like a compressor, you can put like your, your compressor on there, put like a certain amount, it's put 100 PSI through there and then you can listen. If the uh, if you can hear air coming out your exhaust, then you know that your exhaust valve is leaking. If you hear air coming out your air box, then you know your um, your intake valve's leaking. If you hear air coming out your crankcase, then you know it's piston rings. But um, I'm happy to say, 200 uh, psi, excellent. That means um, everything's fine on mine. Anyway, I hope that's uh, helped somebody and, um, you know, just give somebody an idea of what they're looking for. Just thought I'd add this on the end of the video. Um, I'll say thanks for making it this far. When I was on about the comp compression ratio on my bike. Let's see what you want. Go pretty. So when I was on about the compression ratio on my bike, um, my bike was 12.1, uh, sorry, 12.5. So the compression ratio of mine should have been around about 200. But if you've got like a bike with say a 10 to one compression ratio, to find out what PSI you should be getting when you do the test is um, just times it by 14.7. So if you see what I mean, if you had a 10 to one compression ratio, um, you should be getting about 147 PSI. Um, I mean, this is exaggerated, but if you had a 20, to one compression ratio, then you should be getting like, uh, you know, 3300, 200, 284, so like 294 PSI. Um, I'll say, because mine was 12.5, um, mine should have been 100 and about 183, I think, PSI, so it was getting 200. But that's how you work it out. You just get whatever your compression ratio should be in the handbook, um, eight, eight to one, six to one, 12 to one, whatever it is, just times that by 14.7, and that will give you your PSI for when you use a tester. Anyway, thanks for watching. Until next time, bye.